records from the committee, that committee arguing that it is, quote, overwhelmingly needed for the Trump's records and that that need should outweigh the former president's interest in confidentiality. And the Biden administration's lawyers arguing, quote, allowing a former president to override the decisions of an incumbent president would be an extraordinary intrusion into the latter's ability to discharge his constitutional responsibilities. Well, some of the documents in dispute are from the day of the insurrection, White House visitors logs, call logs, as well as handwritten notes from former chief of staff Mark Meadows. I want to bring in our CNN legal analyst, Ellie Honig. Ellie, good evening. You've gone through these new filings. How strong are the arguments? Poppy, you know, the stakes here are enormous. That said, that doesn't mean this is a close case. And when you look at this case, it's really a legal blowout in favor of the committee and against Donald Trump. We've already had rulings in favor of the committee from the federal district court and from a unanimous three-judge panel on the Court of Appeals. The arguments that got made in today's brief are really the same ones that won below. First of all, on executive privilege, the argument from the committee is we have Congress and the current president who agree no executive privilege here. The former president has no basis in this case to overturn that. And then the second big issue is this question of legitimate legislative purpose. The committee says, well, look, we're Congress. We know whether we have a legitimate legislative purpose. We're looking at changing various laws, including the Electoral Reform Act. And Trump really doesn't have any comeback to that other than we don't believe them. We think they have bad motives, but that's not going to carry the day legally poppy. A couple other interesting points about the new brief. The committee confirmed that they will be holding public hearings Mm -hmm. this year. They they confirmed that they will be issuing a report and they showed clearly that they understand they're on the clock. They only have a year to get this done. Right. Yeah, that was an interesting part of it, I thought, as well. Um, Trump's lawyers filed this new brief just yesterday, citing an interview that the chair of the uh, January 6th committee, Benny Thompson, Congressman Benny Thompson, gave to The Washington Post, where he said, quote, that dereliction of duty causes us real concern. And one of those concerns is that whether or not it was intentional and whether or not that lack of attention for the longer period of time would warrant a referral. He's talking about a referral, a criminal referral to the Department of Justice, which is what Trump's lawyers are saying. Oh, they're just trying to do that. They have no legislative purpose to do that. But doesn't that ignore the fact that you can find something that may be criminal referred to DOJ while also doing legislative business. Exactly. So Donald Trump's argument here is they have bad motives. They're not really looking to examine legislation or pass new laws. What they're really trying to do is sort of quasi prosecute me, investigate me, and then send it over to the Justice Department. The problem is those two things are not mutually exclusive. It's not necessarily one or the other. It could be that they're looking at changing laws and revising laws that need to be revisited. If in the course of that, Congress discovers evidence of a potential crime, They should send that over to the Justice Department. So it's not necessarily quite as simple as this either or argument that Trump's making. It's really much more of a political argument than a legal or logical one. I'm really interested, Ellie, in what you think. Do you think that this court is going to grant cert and take up the president's case? Because they would be exploring and, you know, creating precedent on on, in a place where they haven't yet for an ex-president and how much executive power do they have? Uh, privilege they have or not. At the same time, the appellate court was unanimous and really clear in their decision to say no to Trump. You've got to give the documents. It's such a difficult and interesting decision coming up for the Supreme Court. If I had to guess, I would guess that they will not take it. And here's why. On the one hand, the reason they should take it, and Poppy, you're learning this, I know now in your law classes, is this is a unprecedented constitutional issue. That's what the Supreme Court is there for. On the other hand, let's look at it practically. We don't have what we call a circuit split. We don't have different areas of the country deciding this issue differently from one another. And these opinions are really not controversial. They're pretty airtight. I don't think the Supreme Court's going to look at what the Court of Appeals did and say, we have to step in and fix that. So if I had to guess, I'd say the Supreme Court leaves it alone. Mm -hmm. 